not my story, something a Native American guy posted a while ago, but it's some of the creepiest shit I've ever heard. My dad picks me up from school in his pickup truck after he got off work one winter's night. We were driving on a long stretch of road that goes through the woods, it's pitch black outside. The truck radio didn't work, so I was just sitting staring straight out t the road getting hypnotized by the passing trees. Suddenly started to get an intense sensation that something is watching me through the window to my right. I started to turn my head to see what it is when my dad yells don't look. Immediately start to hear tapping on the window right next to my face. Heart stops. Only time I ever saw fear on my dad's face. He started to pray loudly in Navajo. Stare straight ahead. Heart pounding. Not daring to look out the window. Suddenly the truck dips as a white falls into the bed. Whatever the fuck this thing is, is in the back right behind my head. Start to hear tapping on the window behind me. My father makes me look at him as he continues to pray. Close my eyes tight and wish for it to be over. After a few endless minutes the truck dips again and the tapping stops. My father says tomorrow we will ask your grandfather to say a prayer so the evil will forget our faces. Drive home and lie awake in bed all night. Father and I never talk about it again. Okay slash K slash. I've put some thought into this and I've decided to share my WTF slash nope slash Innerwoods story with you. I wasn't going to do it but after seeing a few other threads with people discussing weird stuff I figured I might as well. And maybe I'll get in solution for my one and only unanswered question. What I'm about to tell you is the 100% honest truth, and I'll try and be as detailed as possible. Firstly, some brief background info on me, which I only offer so you might understand my behavior and mindset. I am in my early 30s. I'm an active duty Marine who's been in the Corps for over 15 years, a gunnery sergeant. I have quite a bit of training along with real world combat experience. I am a rational, logical, and skeptical person who does not believe in the supernatural or spiritual, and I'm a long time lurker here at slash k slash and 4chan in general. So this all took place in the Californian Mojave Desert, at a place called the Joshua Tree National Park, three weeks ago over the Thanksgiving holiday. I often go out on short camping trips, and this time I was out for one night of camping before the weather got too cold to tolerate it. This is a huge desert area, with almost no vegetation other than scrub brush and cacti, large mountains with very flat valleys, and hardly any wildlife to be seen. I go out there to do some hiking and to get away from gadgets for a while and relax. The sunsets, sunrises, and starry nights are really amazing. When I go out alone I leave my wife a map of where I'm going on my trip identical to one I also carry along with a set timeline. I usually take a ruck with Duraflame log, so I don't have to burn the already sparse vegetation, basic survival gear with food and water, and I carry a Ruger 77-357. It's a bolt action, 357 rifle with that uses 5 round rotary magazines, of which I take 3 more. I carry this because it's a national park and no one gives me a hard time about it. It's reliable, very accurate, light, cheap to shoot, and powerful enough to kill a coyote from 100 yards if I need to. The coyotes out here aren't deadly, but they are pretty damn fearless and are used to people so it's a necessity. I almost always camp on the large rock outcroppings now, because one time I woke up and saw no less than six coyotes standing in the dark just outside the firelight watching me, pacing quietly. It was actually kind of neat to be so close to them and we sat watching each other for a while, until one started edging in too close and I had to shoo them away with a warning shot. Anyway, this particular night was uneventful aside from the coyotes making a ton of obnoxious noise around 0400. It was also pretty damn chilly, and since I was awake already I started heading back before the dawn even broke. I can make pretty good time and distance on foot. So my campsite was about 4 miles out, farther than most people bother to venture, in fact, 
I've never ran into anyone that far out now that I think about it. Even though it's not that far. So I'm heading back and I'm hiking back down a large hill that has boulders and crevices all along it. Nothing too crazy. Definitely not rock climbing or anything. I stay away from dangerous areas since I'm alone. I get no farther than 400 or 500 yards from my actual campsite and there lying on the ground in front of me I see a blue and white knit beanie cap. The kind with the tassels on the sides. I stopped and started scanning the area. But I saw nothing out of the ordinary. I called out with a hello? And got no reply. I walked over and reached down to pick it up. And as soon as I touched it I heard a faint. Hello? Off to my left. I stood up quickly, but saw nothing. Walking further to my left I saw a large crevice in the hill that went down, about 30 or 40 feet and curved hard to the right among a few very large boulders. I couldn't really see anything down there because it was still too dark and the angle wasn't good. But as soon as I had got a look down into it I heard a much louder hello. Come up from below. My mind clicked into gear and I thought. Shit. Someone got lost and probably just spent a long cold night trapped down there. Are you okay? Are you hurt? Do you need help? I called down. The voice came back. Please. Come help me. I realized. Holy shit. That was a child's voice. Or it sounded like it. So I tossed my pack and rifle on the deck and started yanking out some 550 cord as I yelled down. Don't worry. I'm going to help you. Stay calm. I tied a big loop off around the stone near me and then wrapping it around my arm I came quickly back to the edge. I started to lean forward to find the best way down when several things happened. I yelled down. Stay calm. And then immediately got a whiff of the most awful smell I've ever smelt as I leaned over. Imagine what a long dead animal rotting in a mud puddle on a hot day would smell like. Just like that. In the gloom below I saw a slight movement. Just a shape. But far larger than any child could have been. And then I heard the child's voice. Please. Come help me. I froze. That phrase had sounded exactly the same as before. And I mean exactly. In tone. Inflection. Cadence. Everything. It was so exact that that's what made it weird. A few seconds went by as I hesitated. Then again from below exactly as before. Please. Come help me. Now. I don't scare easily. But I was suddenly overcome with unexplained fear. Not a fear I've ever felt before. Like an adrenaline pumping kind you'd feel from a car accident or firefight. But a gut wrenching. Predator and I'm the prey type feeling that made me panic. I went into full flight mode. I reeled back. Scooting on my hands and feet and grabbed my rifle, panting. I remember thinking to myself, this isn't enough. I should have brought my M1A. And a second later I heard scraping and scrabbling sounds. Coming up the crevice, I stood up and fucking ran. Left all my gear behind. Just rifle in hand. Right down the hill. I heard panting, huffing coming from behind me. And then loud as shit please, come help me. I was sprinting in the dawn, nearly hysterical with fear, and then I was back, through the park entrance, and straight to the office, where I started banging on the door, hell I was kicking it even, and yelling for help. A park ranger came from around the side of the building and told me to knock it the fuck off. Thinking about it now I realize he had his hand on his pistol and I very nearly got myself shot with all my bonkers behavior mind racing. I told him the only thing I could think of that would make sense. I was coming back from my campsite and someone attacked me and chased me. He looks at me and says. Who? I tell him I have no idea. I never got a look. And that I could take him to where it happened where all my gear was. So after a brief chat with another ranger. This old fella and I get into his ATV and head back to the hill. We get up to the crevice in the rock and sure as shit. My gear is still there with the cord still wrapped around the stone like I left it. But no one else is there. And no blue and white beanie either. The ranger gets a little pissed. And asks me if I had been drinking or doing drugs. 
and after returning to the office and taking my statement he tells me, maybe next time you come out here you might want to leave the rifle at home, okay buddy? So that's it. I headed home, took a shower and tried to figure it out. I decided that either some seriously fucked up kids had just pranked the shit out of me, or that I had almost been robbed and killed by some tweakers in a desert hiking ambush. The only problem with these that I can't figure out is that if either one is true, then what was that fucking awful smell all about? Honestly, I don't know California legends that well, but I'll be the first to say it, Skinwalker. Basically, slash K slash Omraid, you met something that eats people, and a skeptic who thinks you're a 5150 case. This means, never return to that area again, one, because the ranger might try to get charges on you for some reason, and two, because whatever that was, might remember you and decide to deliberately hunt you. I'm going to look into this, but it's really hard to believe it, even after living through this. Also, my statement was actually filed as an actual report at the ranger's office, and is on public record if anyone wants to verify that I'm telling the truth, although I may have left out some of the more interesting parts of the encounter in the report, for obvious reasons. 29 Palms, are you an instructor out there Gunny? I miss bouldering at Joshua Tree and those were definitely some of the most beautiful night skies I've ever seen. Kind of haunting to think I was camping, and drinking, in Skinwalker territory. Yes, I'm an instructor with a year left to go out here at 29 stumps, but I'd rather not get too detailed here on 4chan about my specifics. Okay now, to people who say nothing crazy happens out here in this desert or the park. You obviously aren't a local who's lived here their whole life. I've lived in Yucca Valley my whole life and I can tell you that in these super tiny towns there is several of cases of people getting lost or going missing every year out here that you don't hear about, usually tourists types. It's not hard to keep it out of the news when your only real news outlet is a couple of town papers run by four or five people each. It would be really bad for what tourism we have if word got out that people were going missing out here regularly. What usually happens is that people misjudge distances in the desert, thinking things are closer than they really are, and then the dryness dehydrates them quickly. Here's something that happened to someone I personally knew about four years ago in this same desert that OP was in. A kid I went to high school with was apparently going through a rough time and he decided to commit suicide. This guy drove out, parked his car left a note in it, and headed out into the desert. A couple I days later they finally found some of the guy's clothes and backpack with weed still in it, but never found the guy. Now if you weren't friends with the family or locals from here you'd never know these details, but the news never said a peep about it, not even a boy missing spot. Now this was intentional, but my point is the same, people get lost and go missing out here more often than you'd expect. Okay. I'm going to take the time to read up on this stuff. Right now I think I need to take a break. Rethinking about this over and over again makes me feel a bit nauseous. I will say that there is some weird shit out here in the desert. Plenty of meth head tweakers, old abandoned mine shafts, and hell. They even permanently shut down part of our training area a few months ago because they found another Native American site full of artifacts during a live engagement. Parents die in a car wreck. A week or so later, I'm laying in bed, crying myself to sleep as usual. Hear a creak on the floor outside my room, and giggling. My dog perks up and starts growling like crazy. My mom slowly leans around the corner of the door. She looks different, and her movements are all wrong, jerky and twitchy. Go to sleep anon. It'll all be better soon. It's her voice but sounds clotted somehow. My blood is ice water. My dog is whimpering and cowering now. Mom jerks back around the door. Another creak. My dad leans around the corner. It's okay son. We're gonna be a family again soon. Just fall asleep. And giggles. Like my mom. His movements are all spastic and fucked up. His face is a grinning rictus. He jerks his head back out of sight. My heart is pounding, quickly and quietly as I can, 
I grab my phone and dial 911 to report a home invasion at my address. I can hear movement and that insane giggling from the hallway. I'm laying there with tears rolling down my face from fear. I don't know how long it was until I saw flashing lights outside the house and muffled shouts. Hurried movement in the hallway. Something crashes to the ground. Muffed shouts from downstairs as the cops come through the front door. Thank you God. They search my house and afterward a cop approaches me white as a sheet. Anon. It's hard to tell you this but we found your parents. Faces. On the ground outside. That was almost 10 years ago. They never found the sick fucks that did it and I still have nightmares. So slash x slash. I'm from Germany. We have tales about doppelgangers. Don't know if it's the same but it sounds just like that. Anyways I live in the south of Germany near Forest Schwarzwald. Been camping there since childhood with friends and their families usually annually or every second year. Here and there I remember our parents being kind of worried about something but it never was something big. Sometimes there were weird voices in the forest but hey, it's not a city after all. Now I'm 21 and we still go camping there, nowadays without our parents though. Last year I had a creepy encounter I want to tell you about. Go to usual camping site with four buddies. Set up camps on the same place. Pumped up because everyone's always looking forward to this event. Celebrate first night at campfire with alcohol. One buddy stumbles away to take a piss. He's one of those men who can't pee with others around so he goes deep in the woods. Comes back talking about some other campfire. We laugh at him and assume he just saw ours from afar. Blame it on the alcohol and he gets convinced. Eventually take care of the fire and go to sleep hammered. Wonderful morning with headache follows a peaceful night. We enjoy our stay and go swimming in a river nearby. Get back to our camp and one friend hurries out of his tent. Someone went through his backpack. His stuff is spread all over his sleeping bag. Shirt and phone are missing. Go to check my tent and find my backpack emptied. 2. Get alarmed and assume a thief. Everyone searches for their valuable goods such as expensive lights, money and phones. Everything there. Only friend's shirt and phone missing. Decide to look for footprints and find a trail in the coal leading into the woods. No boot prints but actual bare feet. Oh shit. All of us decide not to stay there and we pack our stuff. Take some time to get equipment back in our cars. Suddenly other friend's phone starts to ring. Guys you should see this, fuck. We run up to him to see that the stolen phone is calling. Robbed friend gets angry, takes the phone and answers. Listen that's not funny ye. Stops talking abruptly. Pale as a ghost. Turns on the speaker. Someone is talking slowly like a mad baby. In the voice of friend's dad. Everyone stunned, scared and puzzled at the same time. Bravest one of us snaps out of it, takes the phone and shouts at, Dad. Dad, hangs up. Dead silence all over over the camping site. Let's call him to find this fucker and get the phone back. Bravest one suggests. Nobody really stops him so he starts dialing. Hear it ringing in the forest. Ringing coming nearer. We get together, grabbing knives and shovel see a shadow standing in the forest friends dad calls out to us comes out and looks just like him only wearing his son's shirt and nothing else opens mouth and out comes gibberish again we attack him and he runs into the forest screaming like a madman decide to stay together and follow him he runs towards an open field with a dead fireplace drops the phone and vanishes behind trees we pick it up and see other shadows coming from his direction. There are eight in total, all trying to form words. Now hear my parents' voice. Fear now rules our minds. Book it back to our camp. Get in cars and fucking hurry out of the forest while calling the police. Didn't find anything but friend's shirt. We talked with our parents about it. They panicked and told us that on some of the many pics you can see shades watching from the woods. They'd also see someone in two places at the same time although that wasn't possible. Until that day they put it up as bullshit but now that changed. Some of us are in therapy and nobody believes us. We never went back there. Oh, 
lived in the bush for most of my life till just recently. Two years ago, a few friends and I are chilling at a trail that goes into a very steep gully. It's night time. Sitting in my car listening to music quietly and talking. Windows down, breathing in that warm summer air. Keep hearing small rustling in the scrub just a few meters away. Friend in the passenger seat asks if we can hear the rustling. Say yet yeah, it's probably just a wombat or fox or something, unless it's a yoey. We all chuckle and my friend goes on to say. Well if it's a yoey it better not fuck with us cause I'll destroy it and its family. Clearly joking we all laugh at him being a dick. We keep talking for a while but I notice there's now no birds chirping, crickets or any noise for that fact. Feel something watching me from the bushes. Primitive survival mode engaged, exe. Fight or flight kicks in as I hear something big moving towards us. Flight it is. Start my car and slam it in gear. About to get the fuck out of there when something big smacks the back of my car. I'm speed all the way to the nearest car park that was well lit. We are all freaking out. Get out and inspect the damage. Huge scratch down the back of my car. I tell my friends about how the aborigines I used to be friends with say you have to respect the yoi, if it even was one. Now fast forward a week. We decide to go back there and apologize, just to be respectful. We go to a clearing, sit down and begin talking to whatever is out there. Saying how we were sorry for disrespecting them, their land and making threats. Leave fruit for them as a peace offering. Tell them we'll be back in a few days. Fast forward a few days. We go back at just before sunset. We go even deeper into the gully this time. The sun is starting to set now and we are about halfway down the track. Talking quietly between each other. All of a sudden this god awful screech resonates from the bottom of the gully. It sounds like nothing I have ever heard and I have heard all the native animals cries. Some are really messed up. I know all that is down there is a big ass creek and hard to traverse scrub slash cliffs. It sounds like those big foot screams from YouTube only whatever it is sounds small and or young. We stop in a clearing, my friends ask me what the hell that was. All I can do is shrug as I feel my adrenaline cranking, trying to play it cool. My friend get the great idea to do some wood knocks to see if it will respond. Three great knocks echo through the gully. Another scream but this one is deeper and much closer. He knocks again. There's silence for about five minutes. Then to the left of us, about three meters away in the scrub I hear something grunt. It sounds like a fucking gorilla. Now to the right of us there's something moving in the scrub. Whatever they are, they have us surrounded. My survival instincts are screaming at me by this stage but I know I can't show any weakness. It's really dark by this point. Without saying anything we all start walking back up the track. Here are the things following us the whole way. Finally we get to the car. Get in and we are all shaking. About to say something but I turn on my car lights. Four fucking sets of eyes staring straight at us. Reflecting like cat's eyes. These things are big and staring straight at us. God fucking damn it, JPG. Reverse and speed out of there while my friends are swearing and yelling. To this day they refuse to go back there. Well, continuing. After that incident none of my family believe me except my sister and my girlfriend. My girl is pretty much a hippie slash druid, loves animals, nature and all that. Bring up the idea of taking her to the trail to show her that you always exist. She's hesitant at first but agrees when I say we'll go during the day. So we end up at the trail but decide to walk into the scrub rather than down into the gully. Didn't want to stumble upon a baby and piss them off. We are walking and talking, generally enjoying ourselves. That feeling of being watched returns but it doesn't feel threatening. My girlfriend asks if I can feel something watching us. Yup. Keep walking and talking but now I can hear something following us quietly in the bushes. We finally decide to head back. As we turn around there's a loud knock from just a few meters away. We freeze in place not knowing what to do. Then we hear three loud knocks from deep within the gully. Well time to leave. About to walk away when I decide to give them one last gift. 
Pull out some fruit from my backpack and put it down on the track. Scan the bushes for movement. Can't see shit Sarge. We start heading back. Decide to have one last look. Turn around to see if I can see anything. Nothing. Wait where's the fruit? Nudge my girlfriend and she turns around and gasps. We make it back to the car. Just as we are about to leave. Deep scream comes from down within the gully. I haven't gone back since then, thought it'd be best to not invade their territory too much. Years ago. Camping alone. Remote area. Not sure I'm not the first human being to set foot here in at least a century. Got fire going. Hear twig snap. Worried it's a cougar or coyote. Retrieve AR-15. Set it on the log next to me. Toss more logs on fire. Twig snaps again. Look where I heard the sound. See eyes reflecting firelight. They're fucking six feet off the ground. Owl? Cougar perched in a tree? Bear on its hind legs? Aim super bright surefire at eyes and turn it on. Trees are lit up like day. Nothing's there. Turn light off. Eyes are there. Blinking rapidly like the light hurt its eyes. Shine light at them again. Nothing. Turn light off. Eyes blink rapidly again. Then retreat into trees. Can hear brush rustling as it moves. WTF. Cradle rifle and lap. Toss more logs on fire. Hear leaves crunching behind me. Fuck. It circled around me. Spin around. Shine flashlight. Nothing's fucking there but trees and bushes. Turn light off. Eyes blink rapidly. Then stare steadily at me. Nope. Climb into Bronco. Lock all the doors. Sleep in backseat with rifle in my arms. Wake up next morning. My tent is collapsed. Something or someone pulled up all the tent pegs and pushed it over. Fuck this campsite. JPG. Move to a different area two miles away. This place is full of boulders and near a dry creek bed. Set up camp at the base of a boulder half as big as my house. Build new fire pit. Start fire. Stack firewood. Oh yeah. Cooking chili tonight. Hear bush rustling. Damn it. That better be a fucking possum. Click safety off of rifle. Look all around. There's the eyes again. Six feet off the ground. Shine flashlight. Nothing there. Light off. Eyes blink rapidly. Then move. Eyes beginning to circle the fire. Rustling and snapping twigs as they move. Shine light repeatedly. Wiggle it around. Get up and move around trying to see whatever it is. Nothing. All I can see are the eyes reflecting my campfire. And only when the flashlight is off. Watching eyes warily. Start creeping towards Bronco. Twig snaps behind me. Spin. See eyes in the trees behind me. Fuck. There's two of them. I've got a gun. Quit fucking around and come out where I can see you. No response. Eyes continue circling camp. Crunching rustling and snapping fuck this fire a shot at the ground roughly where the feet of one should be both pairs of eyes stop and blink a few times i stand side by side then disappear like whatever they were turned away from me hear them crunching through brush heading deeper into woods away from me get into bronco and lock all the doors again don't want to pack my stuff because that involves setting my rifle down and turning my back on those things don't want to drive off without my stuff either. Settle for sitting in car. Sitting up all night in case they come back. Fall asleep sometime around 4 AM. Wake up at sunrise. My tent is shredded and the aluminum poles bent. Sleeping bag is 20 feet away from camp and partially buried under a pile of leaves. Something pulled my pot off the fire and ate my chili. Nope. Pack my shit and get the fuck out of Dodge. One month later. Tell friends about creepy eyes in the woods. They all think we should go find out what they are. Maybe it's Bigfoot. Decide we should load for bear. Friend 1 brings his fall in 1911. Friend 2 brings AK-47 and 357 Magnum. Friend 3 is poor. Brings Mossberg shotgun. I bring AR-15 and CZ-75B 9mm. Friend 1's dad says he wants to go too mostly to keep us out of trouble, and brings his marlin. 
1945-1970 and dot. 44 Magnum along. Loans friend 3 another 9mm. Set up camp at Boulder's site. Show them around. Get fire going. Friend's dad breaks out a bottle of Jägermeister and we all share a drink. Just one though. He doesn't want us armed and drunk. Swap spooky stories to get in the mood and discuss Bigfoot documentary on History Channel. Debate why the hell the History Channel has a documentary on Bigfoot. Suddenly, hear loud twig snap. Look around. Spot eyes six feet off the ground again. Everybody shines flashlights simultaneously. Nothing there. Turn lights off. Eyes blink rapidly. Dude, it's just like you said. Everybody takes turns shining lights and waving them around. I start circling the camp, crunching through the brush. How come we can't see anything when we shine our lights? Sudden crashing noise, hear rock sliding and falling. Another pair of eyes blinks on top of the huge boulder, then drops to the ground with a loud thump. Shine lights, nothing. I start circling camp like the first set. Friends dad, fuck this shit, rock and roll. Mad minute, everyone fires every round in their rifles slash shotgun at the eyes, then switches to pistols and keeps shooting when their rifles run empty. Reload. Ears are ringing. Shine lights. See nothing but trees full of bullet holes. Turn lights off. Both pairs of eyes are gone. Search the woods with flashlights. Don't find any tracks. Find something like blood on the ground. Looks black under our flashlights. Find nothing else. Feel stupid and crawl into friend one's dad's huge army tent. Chatter in our sleeping bags. Agree we were dumbasses for shooting like maniacs when we didn't know what our targets were. No one will admit we were scared like little bitches and that's why we shot. Finally we're off the adrenaline and fall asleep. Wake up. Something is rustling outside the tent. Slide pistol out of holster and loudly snap the safety off. Nearly shit my heart out when a hand clamps over my pistol and the hand holding it. It's friend one's dad. Shh, it's right outside. Don't move. Slides out of sleeping bag and stands up. Oh shit, whatever it is, it's rubbing against the tent because the tent wall is bowed in towards us. Friend's dad carefully steps over friend three to get closer to the side of the tent. Where's his gun? Suddenly stabs into the side of the tent with the biggest fucking bowie knife I've ever seen. Something that sounds like a cross between a bear that just got kicked in the balls and a pissed off elephant screams. That entire side of the tent collapses. The others wake up and start yelling. Friend's dad is shouting don't shoot, don't shoot. He's afraid we're going to shoot each other in a panic. Finally pile out of tent and start frantically waving flashlights and guns in all directions. Nothing. It's dead silent. Me. Friends two and three pile into my Bronco. Friend one and his dad into their Suburban. Stay up as long as we can. We all fell asleep. Five guys hyped on panic and adrenaline. And we all fell asleep? Wake up shortly after sunrise. Tent is collapsed. But hasn't been tampered with. Ice chest is flipped on its side and the contents spilled. Only things missing are a package of lunch meat. All of our beef jerky, we brought a lot, and the bottle of Jaeger. Fuck this, we're going home. Start packing. Friend's dad finds his knife in the tent. It's covered in blood so dark it's almost black. He nopes, cleans it off, and keeps packing. We haul us out of there and stop at a diner for breakfast. Waiting for waitress to bring us our food. Try puzzling out what the hell it was we encountered out there. Friend too. Wait the meat makes sense, but why the hell did it steal the Jaeger? Since then, I've spent a lot of time in the woods, it's kinda my job, and seen some weird, creepy shit, including things very similar to this encounter. I don't freak out about it now, and I'm not going to fire panic shots into the dark or anything like that, but I do have a healthy respect for whatever is out there and I don't go into the wilderness without a gun, period. There is some seriously bizarre unexplainable shit out there. Stay safe. Be me. Living in Little Blink and you'll miss it town in a shithole country. I work at a PC repair store but we do more general electronic repair related stuff. 
I actually have very little knowledge about this shit but almost everyone in this town is a boomer and you'd be amazed at how many people come in complaining about their broken PC and it just turns out it's fucking covered with dust and after a good cleaning it works like a charm. If it's not that, you can be sure they downloaded some shifty shit online and you just run some antivirus software and problem solved. Anyway, I'm at work like normal when the local head cop walks in, sheriff equivalent I, suppose, and tells me he needs some help with some tech related stuff on a case he's got. Sweating tape. JPG. Like I said, I know very little about this stuff but once you fixed a boomer's PC or laptop or phone one time they think you're a fucking savant. Get permission from boss to go help. Go to police station. Have to sign some shit about how I'm like an IT advisor on the case or some shit. He starts asking me if I saw any weird things in the recently. Weird. Eventually he slides he a smartphone. Tells me some local girl went missing and her friend says she got abducted by aliens while they were making blogging videos of some kind and he needs me to find them so he can watch them. I'm fucking dead inside as I scroll through this phone, we got the password from the friend. Somehow she knew it, and realize I'm literally just here to find the video on her phone and click play. There were a couple different folders with videos and this boomer cop honestly didn't even know how to find it and thought he needed some IT genius to hack into the phone or some shit. So I'm going through the different folders trying to find the most recent video. Whole time cop is telling me what happened. I honestly think there must be some sort of law against that. Like, he can't just tell me about this case and these people involved but when you're in the middle of bumfuck nowhere people don't really care too much about the rules. If the family wants to sue him for that shit I imagine they'd have to take him to the nearest city cause we don't even have a proper courthouse. Anyway, I'm half listening as he tells me about how the phones at the police station were going crazy last night and how people were calling in about lights in the sky and people prowling around their gardens. I'm just like uh huh yeah, that's crazy. I was drinking and watching anime last night with my headphones on so I didn't hear any of this shit. Every video is just this girl. Sometimes with her friend talking about some K-pop band they like or cooking and doing recipes and shit. All the videos are like 3 to 5 minutes long. Eventually find a video that's 10 minutes long, 10 minutes exactly. I imagine the phone automatically stops at that point and skip to the end and it's just like two and a half minutes of nothing. Phones just pointed at he ceiling fan and then it cuts off. Bingo. Track back to the three minute mark. Girl is lying on her bed talking to her friend. It's a split screen and her friend is just chilling at her house I'm guessing. They're talking about some shit. Super forced and awkward. I think they were uploading these to YouTube or TikTok or some shit in hopes of becoming famous. Missing girl eventually stops laughing and gets this terrified look in her eyes. I say her eyes because her face was barely moving. Looked like she had a stroke or something. She's really still but her eyes are really panicked. She must have had the phone leaning on something cause it didn't move at all. At this point the cop has shut up and has moved next to me. So this girl is lying there looking like she's got a gun to her head. Imagine her phone lying to her right, by her head, probably propped on a bedside table, as it records. So we can see over her and are her doorway a bit but most of the room is off screen. Her friend starts asking her what's wrong. Girl's eyes are darting like crazy now. I think she was trying to say. I can't move but it was from out the corner of her mouth. And really mumble really looked like a stroke victim. Video goes on like this for like 30 seconds. Her friend is clearly scared but obviously doesn't want to freak out in case it's a prank. I would have thought it was a prank but I notice one little tear run down her face. This girl is clearly terrified. Eventually hear floorboards creaking outside girl's room. Light from hallway gets a bit dimmer as someone walks in front of it. Oh shit. JPG. I'm about to watch some fucking serial killer walk into this room and take this girl. Feels like fucking CSI, Miami. 
girl's eyes are fixed on her doorway. They are bulging to the point that they look like they're about to pop out. Figure appears in the doorway. Very tall. Very dark. Quite wide across. Literally needs to turn shoulders to enter through doorway. For some reason the fact that it looked right, the wrong way, into the other room, first scares me. Like, it just gave it this very human element of searching the rooms for someone. Honestly wasn't even thinking at this point. I was just watching this shit like I was completely detached and this wasn't even happening. Like when you're dreaming but you realize it's a dream. They are three of these things and they enter one after another. The best way I can describe these things is they look like a mix between an owl and that thing from Spirited Away, No Face is the name I think. Imagine that thing but with an owl's head instead of a mask. But also it has a little lipless mouth instead of a beak. They get closer and I realize that those giant black ovals aren't dark feathers like how an owl tricks you into thinking it has giant eyes. These things actually have massive, fucking eyes. The biggest difference between these and normal aliens is how big they were. The heads and eyes were massive but not really disproportionate to the bodies. Looked like pick related but they were wearing clothes like no face black shawl looking things made it hard to tell what their bodies looked like cause it was just a solid black mass but definitely clothes and clearly the bodies under them were huge we just sit there fucking dead silent as these things walked towards the girl her friend has been screaming the whole time they stand over her and i notice that she's screaming too but it's muffled and coming out the corner of her mouth it's like I'm honestly watching somebody have a sleep paralysis episode. They reach out. Hands and arms are very stereotypical of grey aliens. Slender and pale. But when juxtaposed with those huge bodies they almost look like tentacles. Two of them literally pick her up like she's a sack of potatoes. Like they don't even look her in the eyes. They carry her out the doorway. The one in front makes quite a big bow to ensure she doesn't hit her head on the lintel. Weirdly the camera doesn't move during any of this but after the two are gone with the girl it suddenly gets knocked over and we can hear quite a lot of clattering. I guess the third one did it. Cop literally whispers dot. There was signs of a struggle. I guess for my benefit or maybe the story was just making sense in his head. We just sit in silence for the next three minutes as the video rolls while pointed at the ceiling fan. Remember how I said it was anticlimactic? Well. That was basically the end. I left the police station like I was a fucking ghost just wandering around and I never got called back. The girl was never found and... The whole town just seems to have gone. Huh. I guess she got abducted or something. I don't know if anyone else saw the video and I never told anyone but my sister but the whole town knows the story now and I imagine about half believe it. I think the video probably still exists and I've asked the cop about it but he just says he can't give me case evidence, suddenly he fucking cares about the rules. I don't think any men in black came and scared him or anything and I imagine he's shown it to a few people. My one friend told me the story in perfect detail even though I never told him. That phone is probably sitting in a desk drawer right now about 5 kilometers away from me but I'm not about to go break into a police station to prove it to anyone. I think the official story is that she got kidnapped by three dudes in masks. Anyway, I still think about that girl sometimes. Her fucking eyes looking at those things and the way they looked at the wrong doorway first. Fucking awful. Anyway, I've gotta go cook dinner for my family so maybe I'll come answer any questions in a few hours.